Well, good morning everyone. Let me say Happy New Year and welcome to this first Sunday of 2021. My name is Reverend Amy and it's great to be able to welcome you to our time together online this morning. We gather on this first Sunday of the year to, to worship, to hear from God's word, to pray, to come into the gates and into the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, a God who is faithful. A God who led us through 2020 and a God who promises us his presence with us in the year ahead. Hopefully you have a service sheet in front of you. If not, why not jump onto our website www.stlukes16.co.uk and you can grab a service sheet there. That will be the song words you need and the responses. Today we're going to join in as much as possible as we worship together this morning. I want to read a couple of verses from the Psalms to begin our time and for many of us it's a favourite psalm, we even used it last week in our service but as we start a new year together let's just be reminded of God and what he does for each of us in the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely... Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why don't we just take a moment or two to still our hearts, and then we are going to sing together. Loving Lord Jesus, as we come into your presence this morning, would you open our hearts, our ears, our eyes to what it is you want to do in our midst this day. Lord, you know how we feel this morning, what questions or fears or hopes we carry. Lord, thank you that with you we can come as we are. We don't need to have it all figured out. We don't need to feel happy all the time. We don't need to be certain about what is to lie ahead because we know we walk with you, the one who holds us as you hold the world in your hands. Lord, would you speak to each of us this morning? Would we know your love and your peace and your hope this day, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn of praise, the great hymn, Love Divine. All loves excelling, joy of him to earth come down. You might want to stand with me as we sing this song of praise together. Let's worship.
love or a joy of heaven to earth come down love divine all excelling we meet this morning online but together to encounter our God of love a God who came down a God who draws close a God who still leads and guides us this day this week this month and this year a God whose presence is promised to each of us why don't you join me in saying the words of our opening prayer together Lord God you gave, you gave guidance, guidance to the wise men, men until they bowed in worship before our Saviour. Lead us to an awareness of your presence and to bow in adoration before Christ our Lord. Amen. Now each week at the start of the service we have this chance to pause, to take time to consider, to reflect on the past week and to bring to mind times where we know we haven't got it quite right. All of us have surely done things we wish we hadn't. Maybe we've thought things or said things we wish we hadn't have done. Or perhaps on the flip side, there's stuff we know we should have done, but we didn't perhaps get round to doing. We don't do confession so we feel guilty. We do it instead that we might know God's forgiveness, his mercy, the new start that he promises to each of us. When the Lord comes, he will bring to the light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. In a moment or two of stillness, what is it you wish to say sorry to God for? We say the words of our confession together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And God promises us that whenever we seek a new union with him, whenever we repent, then forgiveness is ours. And hear these words that remind us all of the Father's heart towards us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now as God's people we have reason to sing, to celebrate, to give thanks and we're going to sing once more. Bless the Lord all my soul as we begin a new year together as we will maybe wrestle as we continue in the service and throughout the year with not knowing what lies ahead we have this song an invitation to remember to give thanks for all that god has done and will do in our lives the song says whatever may pass whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes and i invite you to worship with me now
I'm going to say the set prayer for us this day and see if you can figure out from the opening prayer and now from the collect who we will be thinking about in the rest of our service. Let's pray together. Creator of the heavens, who led the Magi by a star to worship the Christ child, guide and sustain us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are going to hear our first reading from Scripture this morning, and Daniel is going to read to us from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Today's Bible reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. For this reason I, Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, pray to God. Surely you have heard that God in his grace has given me this work to do for your good. God revealed his secret plan and made it known to me. I have written briefly about this, and if you, if you will read what I have written, you can learn about my understanding of the secret of Christ. In past times, human beings were not told the secret, but God has revealed it now by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. The secret is that by means of the gospel, the Gentiles have part with the Jews in God's blessing. They are members of the same body and share in the promise that God made through Christ Jesus. I was made a servant of the gospel by God's special gift, which he gave me through the working of his power. I am less than... I'm less than the least of all God's people, yet God gave me this privilege of taking to the Gentiles the good news about the infinite riches of Christ, and of making all people see how God's secret plan is to be put into effect. God, who is the creator of all things, kept his secret hidden through all the past ages, in order that at the present time, by means of the church, the angelic rulers and powers in the heavenly world might learn of his wisdom in all its different forms. God did this according to his eternal purpose, which he achieved through Christ Jesus our Lord. In union with Christ and through our faith in him, we have the boldness to go into God's presence with all confidence. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Daniel, for reading for us this morning. We'll think about the gift of God's grace that comes to all of us in a moment or two in our sermon. But before we hear our gospel reading, we're going to sing once more. My Jesus, my Saviour, the one whom everything is changed by and everything in our lives is based upon. Why don't you stand with me as we sing this song of praise together. My Jesus, my Saviour.
standing, you may want to stay standing as I read our gospel reading for today. Our gospel reading is taken from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. So hear the gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I may too come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. If you've been standing, you might want to sit down as we turn to look at this more together. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us. We thank you for the challenge it gives us, for the hope. Lord, would you open our hearts afresh to what it is you want to say to each of us. Lord, perhaps in this story which is so familiar to many of us, would you speak afresh? Bring our minds to a different detail perhaps, a different challenge. But Lord, as the wise men journeyed to find you, Lord, would we encounter you and worship you this morning together, we pray. Amen. I wonder how you're feeling at the start of a new year. As the clock hit midnight on Thursday night or Friday morning, depending on which way you see it, what was the overwhelming feeling? Was it relief at 2020 finally being over? Was it pride for having made it through what was a difficult year? Was it hope for the year ahead? Was it worry or fear about what might happen? Was it peace in knowing the one who holds your hand, even when everything else may seem unknown and uncertain? Perhaps if you're like me, it was probably a mix of all of those options because the start of a new year can bring so many emotions. There's a natural sense to look back on all that has happened, but there's also a desire to look and plan ahead what will be different in the year to come. What is there to look forward to? What goals might we set for ourselves? What hopes might we want to see realised? If we were together in the church, I would ask if anyone had made any resolutions. And if you have, why not drop them in the comments? Maybe you'll inspire some of us to also make some plans or goals. You know, I always make some goals at the start of a year. Although if I'm honest, I rarely manage to keep them in any sort of conscious way beyond the first week of January. You know, this year, I probably hope to walk 
a little bit more each day. One of the things that I found really helpful in 2020 was to make sure I took my daily walk. I think that's something from 2020 I want to keep up. I want to read more. I want to make sure I spend time each day with the Lord. What about you? You know, one thing I've noticed that started to creep up a lot on my social media the last few days are different exercise challenges that people are signing up to, whether it's walking 50 miles in January, whether it's this challenge that I've seen some of my friends joining in with, which is an annual challenge that in 2021 they will walk the length of the UK, the 1,084 miles between John O'Groats and Land's End as they get out each day and do a little bit of walking. Now, if I'm honest, neither of those sound particularly appealing to me. I'm not signing up for either of them, but it has got me wondering about what journeys we will all travel this year. Where might God lead us in 2021? Today is Epiphany Sunday, a day where as a church we look at the story of the wise men. Now, it fits in well with what we have been doing in the last few weeks of our Christmas and Advent series, where we take a closer look at some of the characters in the Nativity. And today, in our final look at that scene, we will focus on the story of the Magi. The wise men who travel an incredible distance in search of the one born, they say to be king of the Jews. And as we have a closer look at Matthew's account this morning, let me ask you a couple of questions. What are you seeking this year? How far are you prepared to travel? And what might stop you seeing what God has revealed to you in the year ahead. Let's jump into scripture together. Now, some time has passed since the visit of the shepherds, which Geoffrey looked at for us last Sunday. And now Matthew tells us in his gospel that wise men from the east have traveled to Jerusalem, seeking the one who has been born to be king of the Jews. They've been following a star which they saw rise, and they've come to worship this newborn king. Now, we might know that there's lots of speculation around these visitors. Who are they? How many are they? Where have they come from? What exactly were they following? But there are some things that we can be sure of. They've come a very long way. And they would be seen to be outside of the scope of how the Old Testament understood God's people. They're not Jewish, but Gentiles, who have been prompted to follow a star. They've travelled to see what might have come to pass. Geoffrey showed us last week the shepherds were considered outcasts and outsiders. And this second group of recorded visitors to see Jesus are about as far away from who would have been expected as possible. But as Daniel read from us from Ephesians chapter 3, in the birth of Jesus, in the mysteries revealed in the Gospels, we see that God's grace, his love, his gifts are given to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. We are all fellow heirs, Paul wrote, members together of the same body, partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus revealed in the Gospel. The shepherds were told by the angel to go and see. And now we have wise men from faraway lands prompted by the rising of a star to go on their own much longer journey towards the one born in Bethlehem who changes everything. Today, all of us too are invited to come and see, go and keep going, moving ever closer towards the one who brings comfort, hope, peace, joy and love this year and in every day that is to come. Now, these wise men have come from faraway lands seeking a newborn king. They are clearly in some way familiar with some of the teaching of the Old Testament and perhaps combined with their other beliefs and superstitions, they found their way to a palace. 
After all, if we were looking for a new king, that would be a highly sensible place to, to head towards. However, when they arrive at Herod's palace, they are met with confusion. Herod the king is troubled by the news, as is all of Jerusalem, for they know nothing of this newborn king. Herod turns to the chief priests, to the scribes, the leader of God's people for answers of where this promised Messiah, the Christ, is to be born. And in a detail which has troubled me all of Advent, the priests and leaders of God's people know exactly where the promised one is to be born. They tell Herod the answer lies in Micah 5. And they send the wise men on to Bethlehem in order to find the one who Micah said will produce the one who would be the ruler, the shepherd of God's people. These chief priests and scribes knew the answers. They've dedicated their lives to leading God's people. They know the prophecies, the scriptures, but they had zero interest in joining the wise men in their search. We'll think about that more in a moment or two. But Herod is then the one who goes to the wise men, who tells them the postcode they need for their satnav and sends them out on the journey, the short journey between Jerusalem and Bethlehem, asking the wise men to return with word of where Herod too may find the child so that he might worship the newborn king. Of course, we know that that is not Herod's desire. He did not wish to worship but to eliminate and wipe out any potential, every threat to his power over Israel. Now Matthew tells us as the wise men set out on their journey, they once more see the star and they rejoice exceedingly with great joy. They follow the star once more to the house where Mary is with Jesus and on entering in they fall down and worship, presenting Jesus with precious gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And upon resting we are told they are warned in a dream not to return to Herod's palace but instead to return by a different way to their own country. It's an incredible story of astonishing commitment to a journey. But what might God want to say to us through this bit of a tag on at the end of the Christmas story? What might God want to say to us on the first Sunday of a new year about what might lie ahead? I wonder where we are like the wise men. What are you pursuing in 2021? What are you journeying towards? What are you seeking this year. The Magi had travelled far, perhaps some scholars say as far as Babylon, some 900 miles away. They had set off in faith following a star. They must have faced opposition. People must have thought them misguided at best and yet they kept on following, hoping to find this promised one. What are you fixing your eyes on? at the start of a new year? How far are you willing to pursue Jesus that you might encounter him? How much opposition or rejection or mockery might you be willing to face in order to pursue Jesus? How much discomfort might we all face in going through in order to seek what Jesus' will and plan is for our lives? There's a danger sometimes, isn't there? We can start off with the best intentions. We're going to pray every day about this thing. But maybe we then grow weary of waiting and trusting. Or something else comes along that we then put all of our focus and attention into. Are we willing to take a journey that lasts months, that may lead to much discomfort, no doubt many blisters, in order to worship and find the one whom we're seeking after this year. Will you seek Jesus this year with all your heart, mind and strength and pursue him through the storms and the challenges that will inevitably come? In place of our desires and hopes and dreams and plans, will we each commit today to journey this year with God 
and towards where he is calling us to this year. But in being like the wise men and seeking Jesus, will we also learn from the mistake they make? You see, Matthew tells us they set out in pursuit of the promised one following his star. But upon getting to Jerusalem, they start to trust their assumptions in seeking the place where the king must be. They turn up at the palace. They followed a star for miles. And yet once they get 10 miles from Bethlehem, they don't keep traveling, but divert from the star to trust their ideas. What gives me the confidence to say that? Well, you see, once they leave Herod's palace, remember, they once more see the star. That means that they'd stopped seeing the star for a time because when they see it again, they rejoice exceedingly with great joy because that which has brought them thus far can be seen to lead them the last seven miles it is between Jerusalem and Bethlehem away from the palace and instead towards the one born in a stable. When the road gets tough ahead, when we're not sure what we should turn to, Will we look afresh to the one who guides us? Will we make scripture and prayer our guide and navigation systems through the uncertainty of the year to come? Will we trust God to take us from A to B rather than trusting him for the first steps and then resting on what we might think is best or our plans and preferences? See, God caused the star to rise, which led the wise men to start on, on their journey. But on reaching Jerusalem, they trusted their own assumptions and it almost wasted the journey thus far. Where might God surprise us this year in the ways he leads us? What might he challenge in each of us and reveal to us in his word and our prayers and the paths of the steps he lights for each of our feet? Are we ready this year to trust and obey? To walk with the one who promises to guide our each and every step? Are we fed up pursuing the wrong paths? In the pursuit of the wrong people to follow the plans that just leave us disappointed or frustrated or lacking? Will we each make 2021 the year we choose to trust more? To listen deeper? To step into freedom and purpose afresh? Will we fix our eyes on Jesus and follow him in every step that is to come? You see, in scripture, God promises us never to leave us nor forsake us. He speaks direction and purpose into each of our lives. Will we choose this year to listen to the one who calls us by name, who promises to stand with us, who even when everything else is going crazy and we're unsure, the one who is our solid rock and sure foundation, the one who never leaves us, but promises to walk with us. Will we follow, step out and obey and trust? What are you seeking this year? Would you find it in Jesus? But I also wonder where we might need a challenge to not be like the others in this story. And as I said earlier, this Advent and Christmas season, I found myself reflecting often on the priests and the scribes of the people who Herod calls upon in his time of confusion, when he wants to know where to send the wise men to. See, Herod assembles up the leaders of God's people to find out knowledge from them about where this promised Messiah is to be born in order that he might track this new king down and the people of God, the chief priests, the top Bible experts know the answer. They've given their lives to study the scriptures and to lead God's people. And they know that Micah had prophesied that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. They know exactly where to tell Herod about where the wise men should journey on to. And yet they show no interest in joining the wise men and finding the Christ. They have all the head knowledge and none of the heart action. They know the right words to say and yet they don't respond with worship and praise. They are prepared to let these wise men travel on and encounter and worship Jesus. They're stuck with their knowledge in stone hearts. Imagine being an expert in scripture, 
Imagine knowing all the right answers but never being moved to experience the love and joy of Christ. Where might we be in danger of having all the head knowledge but none of the faith required to pursue and encounter Jesus? See, God isn't interested in any of us passing a Christianity exam. He doesn't want your head knowledge. He wants your heart. He doesn't want your 100% intellectual faith. He wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want you to be able to drop Bible verses with a click of the hand. He doesn't need the Christian phrases or the false piety. He wants you to start living your faith out, to step into freedom, to trust him with your todays and your tomorrows. Because Christianity was never supposed to be a theory that was learnt. It's not an equation to live a happy, successful life. It's not a language that is learned. It's about relationship. It's about freedom. It's about doing life as it was created to be done. It's about purpose and freedom, not regulations and restrictions. It's not about being a little bit more boring than everybody else. It's about living in the freedom that God created each of us to live in, in his love, in his plans, and his purposes today and for all of eternity. You know, these chief priests and scribes have vexed me all Advent. How could they be content to know the answer and yet miss out on the one they'd waited their whole lives for? What got in the way? Was it fear of Herod? Were they too comfortable with their position of privilege as the leaders of God's people? Were they too busy creating systems about religion that they missed out on the going and seeing the promised one who God had told them would deliver them? This year, let's pursue relationship, not religion. Faith, not logic. Jesus, not a concept of some Christianity. A relationship with Jesus built upon freedom and not boredom. Jesus' way, whatever option the world seems to offer instead. Purity, not temptation. Worship and adoration, not false piety or judgment on the world. I don't know about you, but I'm desperate for a church to get real. For us to lead the way in the pursuit of Jesus and holiness. That we would walk and actually mean and declare what we sing in our songs. That we would want to be like Jesus, our Saviour, standing with those who feel hopeless and cut off and outcast. That we would believe that we actually carry the light of the world in our lives and we would want to share it with those around us. Believe me, if we figured out how to fix this COVID situation, we'd be desperate to share it. If we figured out the solution for world hunger, you want to bet you'd be telling everyone you know. And yet all of us carry the hope of the world, the promises of God's presence with us, where all of us maybe feel alone and confused. As Christians, we believe that God who holds the world in his hands walks with us. I'm fed up of Bible quoting Christianity that says all the right things but doesn't positively impact the world by living out what we claim to say. Jesus changes everything. And as followers of Jesus, we have within us what we need to impact the world. Well, this year, will we live in light of Jesus' love and share it with the world around us? 2021 can be faced with hope because Jesus wins and he never lets us down. Let's not know all the answers like these leaders of God's people that told Herod where to go but not act upon it. Imagine telling God's people about prophecies and scriptures you were waiting for the promised Messiah and then to be able to point someone in the right direction but not want to go yourself. Would we be people that go and see and go and tell that we might lead others to join us in the way of purpose and freedom? Now, in seeking Jesus, we may all have to deal with some other Herods in our lives. Now, I don't mean it in the sense of bloodthirsty kings who are trying to take everyone out around them. But in each of our lives, there are things, and maybe even people, 
who stop us pursuing God's best for our lives? What other idols or kings do we give our hearts to? We may sing and say Jesus is on the throne of our hearts, but what other altars do we give homage at? What do our goals for 2021 reveal about the desires of our hearts? Are we more interested in growing our bank balance, our titles or our relationship with Jesus? Are we looking for success in relationships or work or in power rather than starting first with the God who calls us and knows us by name? What might we need to squash or step away from in order to know Jesus more and to step into his ways for our 2021? What are we so desperately holding on to that is stopping us from opening our hands to what God might want to put in them this year? Where do we need to stop trusting our desires, our plans, our ideas and go with what God is saying and asking of us instead? Why settle any more for good? when we can have God instead? Why settle for what's available now when God calls us to live in light of all of eternity? So this year, what are we pursuing? What are you seeking? Would you find it in Jesus, the one who came close, who got involved in the mess that we might know his love and redemption and purposes in every day that is to come, in the challenges that we each will face, what will you fix your eyes upon? Whose voice will you choose to listen to? Will 2021 be a year your faith grows in new ways? Will you go deeper in your walk with Jesus? Will you step further into purpose and the call of God upon your life? Will you choose to pursue him and turn your back on the world? Will we choose to journey together as a church family? As we seek to respond in obedience and in faith, to where God will lead us as a church and what his love means for us as we seek to share it with our communities and those around us. In a world of confusion and uncertainty, will we choose to trust the one who is faithful and isn't finished with us yet? The wise men responded to the star and set out on a long and uncertain journey to seek the one who was to be the king of the Jews. In the year ahead, will we each respond to Jesus' invitation to come, to get involved, to find in Jesus the one who satisfies, the one who still gifts us his love, peace, joy, hope, purpose and freedom today and in every day to come. What are you seeking this year? How far are you willing to go? And will you bow down and worship the one who has come close? Let's pray. Lord God, Emmanuel, God with us at the start of a new year. Lord, would you help us to fix our eyes on you, to follow you, Lord, you are our guide, our foundation. You light the path for our feet. Lord, you help us to trust, to obey, to step out in faith. Remind us of your presence with us and for us, in us. Would we know you to be our guide, our protector, our defender, our saviour? Lord, we pray this year would be a year in which we know you more. Would you open our eyes and our hearts to where you are leading us and would you help us to trust you? Lord, we are perhaps in danger of pursuing you with our head knowledge, but not with our lives or our hearts. Lord, would you show us where we fall into that temptation? Would you help us to live our faith out. Would we be people of hope, of faith, of exceeding joy in our pursuit of following you as the wise men rejoiced at seeing the star after a time of confusion? Lord, would you help us to know where it is you're leading? Would you help us to set aside time to encounter you afresh? 
Lord, in a world where everything is so immediate, would you help us to fix our eyes on you and on eternity? Fill us afresh with your hope and your peace. Lord, you know what each of us are seeking, the questions we carry, our fears, our frustrations, our hopes. Lord, would you help us bring them to you? And would you meet us at our point of need today and in every day that is to come? Lord, would we be people who journey far with you this year, but also far with one another? Would you help us to encourage each other on the road, in the storms and the challenges that will come? Build us to be an ever stronger family of yours here in this place, that we might celebrate with one another and rejoice when it's time to rejoice, but that we might too may weep and walk with one another when times are difficult for some of us. Lead us always, we pray, Abba Father, Emmanuel, God with us. Change us, transform us, challenge us and inspire us as we seek to follow you this day, this year, we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to respond in song as we sing cornerstone my hope is built on nothing less through the storm we know that Christ is with us when darkness seems to hide his face we trust in his embrace why don't you stand with me as we worship God together in song my hope is built on nothing less
prayers by coming to the one who makes the weak strong, the God who is with us in the storms of life. And Carol is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. Good morning church and happy new year. What a wonderful sermon Amy. What a challenge and a blessing and an encouragement as we go into this new year. Long ago the wise men searching led them to the Christ child. Lord Jesus may all our searching lead us to you and may we always journey with you. Lord of all our journeys, we pray now for the world, for those searching for warmth and safety, for those fleeing persecution and violence, for those in temporary accommodation because their homes have been flooded or damaged, and we remember especially those affected by Storm Bella and by that earthquake in Croatia. Jesus. Lord of our journeying, bless them with the gifts of hope and courage, and may they find security in you. Lord of all solace, we pray for those searching for peace of mind, for those facing mental health problems or addictions, and for their families. For those who began the new year with sadness or loneliness. For those who are sick and needing your healing touch. And we give thanks for the improvement we've seen in answer to prayers for Pastor Dave Gill. Jesus, Lord of all solace, bless them with gifts of hope and courage and may they find comfort in you. Lord of all wisdom, we pray for those searching for clarity and stability in these difficult times, for industries adapting to new trade agreements, for businesses unsure when they can reopen and struggling with new regulations, for farmers and fishermen, for teachers and students amid changing term times and new ways of learning. For scientists rising to the challenge of new variants of the COVID-19 virus. Jesus, Lord of wisdom, bless them with the gifts of hope and courage. And may they find reassurance in you. Lord of all compassion, we pray for those searching for work and for those whose work is exhausting, remembering especially those in the NHS and the emergency services. For carers, for those administering the new vaccines and for those who will receive it. For those searching for ways to feed their families and pay their bills and for the charities and organisations trying to help them. Lord Jesus, Lord of compassion, bless them with the gifts of hope and courage. And may they find strength in you. Lord of us all, we pray for those searching for faith, for your church, as we reach out to those with great need and big questions. And we pray for one another as we offer our time and resources to our communities in whatever way we are able to. Jesus, Lord of the future, bless us all with the gifts of hope and courage and may we find peace in you now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Carol, for leading us in our prayers this morning. <clears throat> 
it's a time in our service where we share the peace with one another and how we all long to do this in person hopefully sometime in 2021 sooner rather than later we continue to pray as carol has done for the end of this pandemic i encourage you to share the peace with those you are watching with and to drop your messages of peace and greetings to one another in the comments light of the christ scatter the darkness from before you the light of christ guide you in the ways of peace and the peace of the lord be always with you and also with you let's share a sign of god's peace or a comment of god's peace with one another peace be with you peace be with you amy peace be with you everyone <laughs> peace be with us all And it is our, our prayer that we would know God's peace in our lives, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our minds, in our relationships with others each and every day of the year that is to come. We're going to sing once more before moving to around this table. Now, I make no apology that perhaps many of the songs are songs we sing very regularly now at St Luke's, but it's an important songs that remind us at the start of the year that we come to a God who is faithful. As we finished 2020, a year that was difficult for many of us for a whole host of reasons, we're reminded at the end of one year and the start of the other that the God who led us through the challenges of 2020 is the God who is still leading us through 2021, the God who is our rock, our refuge, our cornerstone, and we're going to sing faithful one, so unchanging, because that is who we rest on and depend on and trust in the days that are to come. Perhaps you might want to stand with me as we sing this song of praise together, a faithful one, so unchanging.
would we remember God's faithfulness and his presence with us be a known reality in each of our lives in the days that are to come. When I gather together around this table where we remember the gifts of God to his people, Jesus' love poured out for us on the cross, his body and blood given, that we might live in his freedom and love. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for your presence with us. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice you gave for us, faithful one. We call out to you, we cling to you at the start of this year. And Lord, would you speak afresh to us as we receive around this table together now. Lord, as you gave yourself for us, so we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice. We'll say those words together at the end of the communion prayer. Lord, we offer you our lives, our money, our talents, our gifts, our times, that we might serve you in sharing of the life and the love and the forgiveness and the freedom you have blessed each of us with. Speak afresh, we pray, loving Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. The Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord. Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This, this is, is our, our song, Hosanna in, in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to the table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This, this is, is our, our song, song. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks and broke it, saying, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Mm. This is his story. This, this is, is our song, Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us in all the world. This is his story. This, this is, is our song. song. Hosanna in, in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts set on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all of creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. blood of Christ shed for you. Let's pray. Lord God, the bright splendour whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together, Almighty God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding, feeding us with, with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Is the time in our service for notices and for celebrating birthdays. I know of at least one birthday which was celebrated yesterday. Um, if it's also been your birthday in the last, well, two weeks since we had a pre-recorded service last week, do drop your name and when your birthday was in the comments and we'll sing happy birthday together in a moment or two. A couple of notices to give you time to do so. First of all, Carol prayed in her prayers about thanking God for the progress that Pastor Dave Gill from River Church has been making. And I heard just before the service started another positive update about him, that he is responding well to oxygen and is doing much better in hospital in his fight against COVID-19. River Church also really want to thank us as a church for standing with them in praying. I was forwarding <coughs> your prayers on to River Church so they really appreciate that we are standing together in praying for the recovery of their pastor. So do please keep praying for Pastor Dave in hospital. Maybe use him as a point of contact as we pray for all in hospital suffering from COVID-19 and for other health concerns that take people into hospital. We pray, don't we, daily for those who are sick. On Thursday, we are going to have our prayer gathering on Zoom on the first Thursday of the year. We're going to gather at seven just for an hour, seven to eight, to pray for the world, our communities, members of our church family. Why not consider joining us as we start the year together in prayer to the one who changes everything? Morning prayer and Bible study will start back, not this week coming, but the week afterwards. Um, that will be back with us. I want to give a quick notice to you about an event happening on Thursday the 21st of January. I shared on our um, social media of an event called Here With A Purpose that is happening in Newham on the 21st myself along with another curate from St John's, Robert O'Toole, and with the area dean, Reverend Dave Chesney, are hosting an event 
based around the idea that we all have gifts. God has given a purpose to each of us. And why not at the start of 2021, spend an evening exploring with me and some invited guests about how their gifts and talents are being used by God in order to bless their church family, but also their community. It's going to start at 7.30. The hope was to have it at St John's in Stratford. Given the current lay of the land, it will probably now be online only. But if you want more information about that evening, and I encourage all of you to think about coming along to it, what might God have put in your hands, in your heart, in your passions, that he might want to also use to grow his kingdom for us all to step further into our walk with God. Carol, do we have any other birthdays that have come in? Namatende would like us to wish her brother Herbert a happy birthday. Fantastic. And earlier in the year we were praying for Herbert, weren't we, who was in ICU and quite ill in hospital. So how wonderful to be able to celebrate another year of his life. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Herbert. And it was also David Addy's 13th birthday yesterday. And I know that you had a fun day together as a family. So why don't we sing happy birthday to David and to Herbert. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear David and Herbert, happy birthday to you, may God bless you now, may God bless you now, may God bless you now, may God bless you now. <laughs> Why don't we pray for those whose birthdays it has been. Lord God, we thank you for another year of life, for the gifts of life, for the breath in lungs and for the hopes in our hearts. And Lord, we lift David and Herbert before you, especially this morning. Thank you for gifting them with another year of life. And Lord, we pray in the year ahead, they would know your love, your protection, your purposes, your plans for their lives. Lord, we thank you for the way that you answered prayers in the last year for Herbert's health. And Lord, we continue to place him into your hands. Would you restore him to full health? We pray. And Lord, I pray for David and Herbert. Lord, would you be their protector and be their hope and their shield? Would this year be a year in which they continue to grow in their walk with you? And would they know more and more what your will is in their lives and for them? So bless them and be with them, we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why don't you join with me as we say the words of our closing prayer together. Eternal God, God beginning, beginning and, and end, end, go, go with, with us, us in this week's journey. journey. Shine, Shine in our darkness. darkness. Open, Open our, our eyes to all you are doing around us today. today. Take, Take us and use us. us to bring to others the new life you give us in Christ Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you for this time we have shared together this morning. Lord, thank you for the story of the wise men who go on that journey to encounter you. Lord, would this year be a year in which we all journey further and deeper with you. Lord, would you light the path for our feet? Would you give us the hope and the faith and the trust to step out with you daily we pray. Would we know your protection, your refreshing and your guidance in the days that are to come? We pray. Shine as bright lights in this world. Live to show the glory of God and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one last time the great hymn of the church great is thy faithfulness O god my father morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand has provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto me would this be our song this year we pray great is thy faithfulness O god
and so go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning and we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Have a good week.